Hello Sioux Falls, welcome to planning preview for the month of August 2021. This month's meeting is going to take place on August 4th at 6 p.m. at the Carnegie Town Hall in downtown Sioux Falls. As always, we strongly encourage members of the public to come down to speak on agenda items that we'll go through today and non-agenda items. Non-agenda items are anything that you'd like to talk to uh, the Planning Commission about related to planning and zoning in Sioux Falls. So as always, please come down and uh, give us your public input. Uh, for the first part of today's program, I've got Albert Schmidt with the City of Sioux Falls with us. Hi, Albert. How hey, are you today? Doing well. How are you today? Good. Thanks We're right in the me. thick of summer here now. Uh, tell me, how are things progressing uh, down uh, at the planning department? Man, pretty well. Uh, you know, still fairly regular hitting with the applications coming in for different things. Um, this time of year, it's always the same story where uh, I have an idea, we need to get this going, and we got to get it going right away. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely that kind of, even though it's kind of midsummer, it's a last minute push to get permits, applications through before the end of the year. Sure. So it's a busy sure. time for that side of things. It goes fast. You get halfway through, and there's only so many months left in the year. So I'm sure you guys are busy working along. But let's uh, go ahead and dive right into our agenda, right. and, and we'll go through some of these items and talk about what's going on in Sioux Falls. Uh, first on our list is a planned unit initial development plan amendment, uh, and that's at 1305 West 18th Street. So this looks like the main Sanford campus. Tell us what yeah. they're doing here. So we're coming back again to do some, do some minor amendments to this. Um, so the PUD campus um, touches base on parking regulations, building locations, building size, building height. This main application here is to amend about three different locations on the campus to increase the height up to about 125 feet. And that's okay. really the main camp, just kind of preparing for future development going on there. This may not happen this year or next year, but just kind of getting things prepped so that when they're ready to go, they have less hurdles and they can come in and apply. Very good. And our uh, Planning Commission sees amendments to PUDs fairly often, but I imagine the the viewers might not know what a planned unit development is. Can you kind of oh, tell them what that is and sure. how that works? So for us, the planned unit development is a specific area we rezone together to kind of work together um, so that they can share different resources, um, such as with a hospital like parking so you can park on one side walk to the other side so you don't have to account for parking on every single aspect of that area but rather you can uh, reduce the total number of parking that we have on a site so we don't have just a sea of asphalt we try to really make it most efficient as possible in addition with PUDs we try to really encourage pedestrian pathways as well so Sanford and Avera both do a really good job of providing pedestrian pathways both on the sidewalks outside but also through the interior skywalk system so it's a great example of that side of things in addition, the PUDs help us to do kind of a unification of planning, if you will, um, kind of help bring together plans to say, here's what this is generally going to look like as a whole. We're going to identify setbacks, we're going to identify heights, and so that you can kind of plan on everything at once a little bit better sure. than coming in each piecemealing it through. Because sometimes with these larger scale areas like campuses like Augie, USF, Lake Lorraine, or Sanford, Lake or, Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's areas of that campus that are different from other areas, but they can intermix with each other. Yeah. And so it's good to be able to work that together and say, all right, well, this part here, we're going to allow for this. But then once we get further away, close to the single family, we're going to really try to shift back into that standard procedure, standard distances to help protect those. Sure. So it can really create a cohesive development in certain areas. Absolutely. Uh, next on our list is a rezone. It's going from recreation and single family uh, over to just single family residential. Uh, that's at 85th and east of South Pinewood Avenue. So, uh, south side of town, kind of in between uh, Western and Minnesota there. Yeah. Tell us about what they're doing there. Yeah, so you know the south side of Walmart, basically like four blocks to the west of that. Okay. Um, well, this location uh, originally had planned some sort of um, housing development that was going to be some executive housing. Uh, that plan hasn't really worked out real well right now, so they're just kind of rezoning the remaining piece that was a little rec area where they're going to have a pool before and now making it RS to match, and then they're going to re go out and uh, figure out a use in, inside that RS zoning district. So it okay. should match the existing neighborhood quite well. We don't expect any main, any big issues with this side of things. Okay, understood. Uh, next on the list is a rezone from C2 Commercial. Uh, to the I-1 Light Industrial District. This is located at West Madison Street and east of Ebenezer Avenue, so kind of by uh, I-29 on Madison. Uh, tell us about this project. Yeah, so just south of the Southeast Technical kind of campus there, um, there's an area there where they're just kind of getting ready for development. 
Uh, there's an article recently about some storage units that's going to go in in this area as well. Um, so this is two lots. The main part of it's just getting ready for development and just kind of anticipating what kind of uses are going to be out there. And it's really just matching what's already developing out there. Sure. Then the other side of it that we have in there is just kind of correcting uh, a rezone small item where there was a small portion of the lot that wasn't zoned the same as the rest of the lot. So just getting that uniform again for the storage building. So for okay. us, uh, pretty straightforward one just to match what's already out there for the zoning and uses. Okay, so a little bit of both, trying to line it up with uh, maybe a correction, but also uh, looking forward to the future and the new project as well. Indeed. So, very good. Uh, next, we've got a conditional use permit for three digital billboards larger than 288 square feet. That's located north of East Arrowhead Parkway and east of South Veterans Parkway. So we're looking out on the east side of town with this one. Yeah, very east over Arrowhead Parkway, um, kind of in the on the northeast corner there. Um, for this one, we have the application came in, submitted for three different locations along that site, along both Arrowhead and Veterans Parkway. Uh, we're just evaluating the request based on traffic speeds and what we've seen along the corridor there, most of the corridor along Arrowhead Parkway. Almost all the billboards that we've looked at are about 288 square feet. So from a staff review, we're just looking at that, trying to, trying to balance out the request versus what's out there and based on the traffic speeds, see what's the most appropriate. Okay. Understood, and I suppose because it's the same applicant and similar location, they can put them all on one, one uh, agenda item. And yeah, as long as together, it's yeah. on one parcel and it's along a district that allows for billboards, we can do one application for okay. multiple spots. Select very nice. Um, next up on the list is a preliminary subdivision plan for Jefferson Heights Second Edition. That is south of West Maple Street and west of North Valley View Road. So we're up uh, kind of by Jefferson High School up in the northwest part of town again. Yeah, so just south of the middle school um, in that area of town. Okay. Yeah, this area will be a development that's going to be an expansion of the development that's currently being graded today to the east right along Marion Road. So this is an expansion of that single family uh, development. I think it's their phases after those phases and so should fit right in really nicely with the existing amenities we have out there. Yeah and I'm sure uh, a lot of people are excited to see single, more single family homes going up out there. There's uh, such a demand with uh, Foundation Park and everything else out there to uh, get some more houses for people to live up there. Right? Yeah and, and you know from a plan perspective both Jefferson Heights, um, the second one here and the first one uh, just to the east. Uh, both are a great opportunity for us in the planning side to really showcase how we can get a residential development along a kind of waterway because there's a creek back there. Okay. And then we have a future bike trail plan to do some connectivity in there. So okay. no plan on the timeline for that bike trail, but eventually with that built out, it should be a really nice connected um, residential development for people to drive out of there, but also walk on the bike trail, get on the bike trail. and and have really good connectivity. Yeah, there. and that's awesome to see because you know so many of the neighborhoods that are built out have that where they might have a creek or some uh, nature way behind them and a bike trail. But uh, in some of the newer neighborhoods, that's really hard to do. So if we're able to do that, that's a great sign. Yeah, we're planning for it. We'll okay. see, we've got to fund it yeah. now. <laughs> that's right, another uh, topic for another day, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, next uh, is on that same piece of property, but it's the rezone. So it's going from agricultural, and it's got a little bit of a mix, but we're going to uh, single family residential, twin homes, town homes, uh, as well as some conservation. Talk to us a little bit yeah. about the rezone. And so, you know, just kind of stepping back a little bit with this process, as the viewers may or may not know, the first step typically is annex the property in. And then when we annex that property and we bring it in as whatever zoning it is in the county, so in this instance it was agriculture, so we bring it in as ag. Well, obviously if you build houses on there, you need to rezone that so we can do more houses. Yeah. So that's where the subdivision piece from the one before and this one we run concurrently so that the Planning Commission and later State Council can get a full holistic view of what they're looking at doing, how the connections are going to be made. So this is a rezoning request here. They're looking at single family houses, mainly on the south side, or right by the house, and then kind of as you get further down denser, um, allowing the uh, twin homes and town and duplexes and things like that going down there. So. Okay. But all single family versions of stuff, whether it's attached or detached. Okay, very nice. Uh, last one on the agenda for August uh, is a rezone, and uh, it's quite uh, a mix here. So I'll try to hit on as many of them as I can, but it looks like it, we're really just kind of moving things around here. Um, it's going from RS single family residential, there's live work, commercial, apartments, and some conservation, and uh, we're kind of moving things and going into commercial, live work. Uh, residential townhomes, single family, uh, and conservation as well. So that's up at 2300 
2301 North Marion Road. So up uh, Marion and Maple, also kind of by Jefferson High School as well. Right there, yeah. They, so these ones, I always feel bad for the clerks when they have to read them out because yeah. it's just a ton of districts. <laughs> it's, so it's to simplify what's happening out here, they had an original plan. The street layout had to change because of the, of the requirements for engineering that side of things. And so they're just updating that based on the new layouts. Sure. And so there's really no changes as far as what's going to go out there. It's just moving them around a little bit and finalizing that. Trying to make sure things so, are in compliance yeah. with standards. And, and this is that phase one, the one we talked about before. So it's just eventually there'll be some some level of pedestrian connectivity to these other phases to the west. Okay. But yeah, this is just basically starting along Marion Road. And if you go out there today, they're grading, doing a lot of work. They've taken a lot of trees down in preparation for this. And so it's really come along on site there, but this is the kind of the final step before they need to really get their final plats in and then start pulling building permits. Okay, sure, very nice. Well, stick around everybody. Albert's gonna stay for the second half of our show. We're gonna talk about building permits so far in the year of 2021. Hey, this is Seth with the City of Sioux Falls Housing Division. I'm here today with today's Home Maintenance Minute uh, to talk to you about your air conditioner and how to take care of it. So one thing that I like to do once a year uh, is to make sure, first and foremost, that your disconnect is turned off. All air conditioners should have a disconnect on the outside as well as on the panel. So you want to turn the breaker off at the panel, turn your disconnect off outside, and then you know there's no electricity in the unit. Okay, then if you look on the top, there's four bolts that hold this fan assembly on. If you take those bolts out, lift this assembly out and off and over to the side a little bit, just take a simple garden hose and go in around the fins on the inside of the unit and spray water from the inside out. And so if you look on the outside of an air conditioning unit, um, there are fins, it's much like a radiator in a car, um, and they get clogged. They get clogged with cottonwood, trees, debris, and, and leaves, and dirt, and dust. And simply going in from the inside and pushing that material out with water um, will clean that up, and you, it'll keep your air conditioner running much longer. Thanks for being with me today with today's Home Maintenance Minute. Welcome back, Sioux Falls. Thanks for sticking with us after the break. I'm joined again by Albert Schmidt with the City of Sioux Falls. Thanks for sticking around, Albert. My pleasure. Uh, we get to do a fun topic this second half of the show here. Uh, one of my favorites, we get to talk about the permit data that we've rolled in through this year, and it's always fun when we get to see staggering numbers like we've had. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, what's particularly unique about this year is some of the large projects that we've seen so far in the first half of the, the calendar. And it really is a testament to the, the, the investments that people are putting into our town right now. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about them. We've got a list here of some of the big ones that are larger than $3 million. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with the first one, which is 5051 West Foundation Court. So up in Foundation Park. Yeah, so just another really big expansion in the area, another warehouse project. I think okay. it's about 330,000 um, square feet. So wow. another large warehouse project going yeah. up there right uh, just to the east of the Amazon facility by a couple of lots. We anticipate seeing more of warehousing, manufacturing going up in there in the future here as well. Obviously with other things like CJ Foods announced, this is, you know, just that side, they're finally at the building permit stage for this one. Um, and so, yeah, just really taken off for the last few years up there and it's just a ton of money and investment. Yeah, and there's just a ongoing construction project up there and I'm sure we'll see that for years to come now and I think it's a real testament to the work that, uh, I mean, the Development Foundation has done for so many years to get to this point. We're now seeing it really, aren't we? I'd agree. Yeah. So uh, well, let's, let's stay up there. We're gonna move uh, right next door to 5050 West Foundation Court. Uh, this is a $24 million uh, project and uh, it looks like an addition to wind chill. Yeah, so I mean, this is a great segue from your last comment of continued reinvestment out there. Um, wind chill keeps on adding on, adding on. They fill up, they build more, they fill up, they build more. And so this is a great example of how that facility first started us off up there. And this is, I believe, their third addition or so up there. Yeah. Um, and so a significant financial investment continue to be remade and remade over there. So 
by the time they're done up there, they're going to have quite the large facility of uh, cooler and air, you know, controlled system area up there. Yeah, that's, uh, I haven't seen the inside, but I've heard it's pretty amazing. I mean, holding that many, uh, or that much frozen food and, and cold storage up there, what phenomenal project. And I'm, mm -hmm. this one's an interesting, we love seeing uh, the wind chill guys add on, because normally you don't see that. It's expensive to always add on, and usually you see one big deal, and I think that really shows their commitment to Foundation Park to be able to say, hey, we're gonna do this again and again. I agree, and you know, that shows too just how forward thinking they were when they bought that land, to buy enough land so that they can keep on adding on as the need came out there, and it's just, I think it's, for us, it's been impressive to how fast that needs come up. When you yeah. think about expansion projects, you typically don't think, well, within five years, you're gonna expand multiple times. Sure. You go, well, okay, maybe 10 years later, you're gonna be needing an expansion for most places, right? Yep. But it's been impressive. Amazing growth, without a doubt. Uh, next up on the list is at uh, 3601 East Sage Grass Street. This is 15 Point Capital. Uh, it's for the City Edge Apartments, uh, 22 million. $875,000 or so. Tell us about this permit. Well, you know, I can tell you this one, you know, kind of generalizing a little bit here, we've seen just a continued investment in apartments. And, you know, there's been some articles out recently talking about just the vacancy rate being basically zero or 1% in this town for apartments even. And so this is just another, another example of large scale apartments going in um, to help try to fill that void, to help out with that. And they, you know, when we see this stuff, this kind of Development is just one of those ones where we see it. It's harder to do smaller projects because of material costs, land costs, yeah. and just having enough land to do that. Especially when we also then come in and say, how are you impacting your neighbors? Let's do buffer yards. You know, we kind of make some additional space needs to take up so that we can try to do that buffering. And so this is the kind of more common thing we've been seeing is these larger scale apartments, maybe not to $26 million or $22.8 million scale on a normal basis, okay. but still, Pretty normal basis. So these are larger complexes, getting higher number of units in there, more stories typically. Again, it's just to kind of balance those areas out and just fill that need. I mean, we're seeing a ton of these applications, both in the rezone side of things as they come in and they start planning for it, and then now on the building permit side. Yeah, it's been amazing being on the planning commission to watch the market react. They, you know, those investors and uh, developers are all seeing the same stories we are, and, and they're seeing the market and the demand that's there, and yeah. it follows with new projects, it, doesn't it? It's been insane for uh, my mind, and I use the word insane, but. Um, to think about how long this has been going on. Yeah. We've been building apartments like crazy, it seems like, for five years. And most of the time, when you look at the normal ebb and flow of this side of things, you kind of go apartments, then down, then up, and then as advice, you know, on the other side of that, they're doing more homes than less homes. And so they're kind of here and there giving and taking. One's doing more, the other one's doing more. And this sense, it seems like both are just kind of continuing going up right yeah. now. So. Yep, you're, you're exactly right. That is, it was the way it used to be. Like, for example, when Greystone was built, you know, 300 some units, uh, yeah. uh, there may be a little bit of a lull, and somebody might say, I'm going to pause for just a little bit because uh, we just put all those units in Sioux Falls. It's not the case anymore. They're just going as fast as they can because they know they need to. Yeah, yeah they, they're getting rents they need, and the, and the market's out there for them to fill those up. And a lot of the, a lot of the times when you talk to these people about this, they're getting pretty substantially filled before they're even complete. So sure. people are already reserving these things. It's, so it's a tough market to be a renter, to find a place to live, but it, yeah. you know, a great opportunity if you have the capital to build these facilities, it's a good time to get out there. Sure, sure. Let's go on to our next one. This is for Avera McKinnon, but it's uh, the Avera Behavioral Health Edition. Uh, that's down on their south campus at 4400 West 69th Street. Uh, for $21,600,000. Looks like Journey Group Company is doing the work here. Tell yeah. us about what they've got going so on. So they came in um, a while ago and reworked their plan a little bit so they had enough parking on site and we kind of talked about that. So we, t we saw that earlier on for Planning Commission and now the building permit project came through for this side of it. So what they're doing is adding another wing onto that building. Okay. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, it's a four or five story wing out there. And so if you drive on 229, you look south before Louis Avenue, you can see this bad boy going up. It's uh, went up very quickly. I mean, they're okay. already basically kind of getting it framed in and all the steel work's all completely done and they're just getting it enclosed, it looks like. So there's glass going up already. I mean, so it's pretty far along. But again, you can see that permit was issued a few months ago already, but it's amazing how fast they work. And yeah. this project here is really to add more beds. And then they're also modernizing their their kind of side of things with how they do this a little bit. And so when you look at what COVID's done for us, 
um, in a negative way, but also when you look at what we've taken lessons learned, this is one of the things I think where Avera has been able to look at that and go, what do we think a little bit? What do we really need in these facilities? And they're able to design that into this so that they can help modernize this kind of facility and use it going into the future. Yeah, that's great to hear that uh, Sioux Falls is getting something like that, a state-of-the-art facility. I think uh, the, the reality is that we do need that in our society as well. And for them to be able to build a great facility dedicated to that, I think is great for our town as well. Yeah. So. Let's uh, move uh, into the next part here, Albert. Let's talk about our building permit data broadly uh, so far this year, kind of in comparison to uh, years past. And uh, it's always fun to do this right now with uh, COVID being you know main driver in 2020 kind of statistics. Yeah. Uh, really threw a wrench in a lot of things. Um, and and you're, you're seeing this just phenomenal uh, building permit data in, in 2021. So when you kind of look at things holistically, what stands out to you the most? And you know, for us, when we look at what we do building wise, I think it's important to note too, for 2020 was just an insane year, right? Yeah. Um, luckily for us in the state of Sioux Falls, we had started moving to a digital system to allow us for more ways and methods to collect information, get permits going and get information out from and to applicants. And so in 2020, we were able to utilize that uh, much quicker than some other communities out there. So when you compare back to our numbers, really our 2020 numbers could have been much, much worse because some communities had to just kind of stop. I mean, yeah. they were done. Whereas we were able to turn on our online stuff more, increase that even more than we had at the time. And so when you look at our numbers here, I mean, we've just seemingly been nonstop. Typically, traditionally, you get to our winter time and we really kind of, not to a halt, but we get very comfortable. I mean, it's very manageable, typically. But this year, you just did not see that. Yeah. Uh, the demand was pent up, materials were pent up. I mean, and so we haven't really had what we would consider a, a slower time. Um, we're starting to get a little more caught up, but the second I say that, they're gonna have a lot of stuff yeah. dropped on them. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's really tough. This has been a unique two years where it just seemingly has just been nonstop for new projects wanting to come in, people coming in to talk to us about new projects and go, I have an idea, I want to do this. And so it's just yeah. never ending, it seems like, which is good. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a positive thing for us to have, and we're happy to be dealing with it and taking it on and trying to make this community grow in a good and efficient way and make good projects become reality. Sure, sure. One, uh, one of the lines that really stick out to me on this list, Albert, is uh, commercial addition and remodel totals. Uh, you take a look at 19, 20, 21, and you go 95 million in 19, 59 million in 2020, and 2021, this first half of the year, we're at $120.5 million. So just an amazing amount of uh, investment in the first half of this year. And it's, it's kind of fascinating to think about those contracts being able to get those materials and supplies like you mentioned. We had a steel shortage, had a lumber shortage, and they still got 120.5 million for the first half of the year. Oh man, I agree. I, you know, when you look at these numbers comparing, you know, we have all this data always on our website. Uh, with this one we're specifically looking at today, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, the one we're looking at is January through J June. And so all those are those specific sections. So they're all equal parts, right? Yep. And you know, you look at 2019, that was at the time a record year for us. 2020 then became a record year for us. Yep. And then you can see 2021 right now, if, you, if we are able to follow the same general pace, we're looking at a substantial year. Uh, and these additions and remodels are a big part of it. And they really increase quite a bit. And what you're seeing there is, a, we, need, we see an increase for demand and services. B, we need to modernize our facilities because we can't get workers, so we need to try to you know, update those accordingly. Or C, it's just looking at this is the time for us to where we were able to slow down a little bit, and so now it's time, a good time to make investments during when it is a little slower for people physically coming in, so that hopefully when things open back up to a more full extent where people are less concerned about what could be out there and meeting in these places, that you're ready to hit at full speed too. Okay. So it, it's a mix of all three of those things, I think. Yeah, very good. Um, let's talk about another line that uh, is really striking to me on here. Uh, you look down at the new commercial and you see manufacturing there. And in 19, uh, at this point, there were 6.6 .6 million. In 20, there were 7.5 million. Now in 2021, we've got $38.9 million in permits out there. Uh, that's 
amazing to say the least. Uh, total exponential growth. Is that coming from some of our bigger projects, I would imagine? Yeah, or? you know, there's been some good uh, warehouse projects going on. What we're seeing uh, from our side of things are people telling us that warehousing is really filling up uh, contractor shops, things like that. There's a need for them out there. Yep. Um, then other things like storage units, things like that. I mean, you know, we've seen storage units being needed for a long time, it seems like. Seems like that market just doesn't end. Yep. But, yeah, this is really trying to catch up to a lot of that side of it. But the other side, too, is is looking at where do we have the land for that I want to go. And we've, I believe, in my mind, when you look at what we've seen historically the past three years, we've seen more rezonings going to the I-1, I-2s more recently. And so we're opening up more industrial land than we probably have had in the past. Okay. And so it's kind of mixing those two together. It's saying, hey, we have more land available now, so let's, let's do that kind of use here. Uh, and also just kind of timing of that based on... Again, very similar to the commercial side. Okay. Modernizing some of this stuff, adding new services into town. So like some of the other stuff you look at, you know, when you have, like I'll just for example, you have an Amazon that comes in, there's also supporting services that come in yeah. with them. So not that this is a contributing factor to this in specific number, but when you have an Amazon facility for the actual warehouse come in, well you also have the, now you're noticing probably more of the vans going around town, well they have a separate warehouse for those kind of vans where they're storing them, yep. things like that. Yep. And then other delivery services are also expanding their services out, especially as we grow and yep. become a larger urban area. And those are real um, tangible things that happen when you do get a big project like that. They actually do happen. I know we hear about them, you know, in some of the presentations, hey this is our project, but then this will spin off into other things. And some people are skeptical of that, mm -hmm. but you do have to look around, uh, you know, after those things are in process to see that, yes, these are real uh, other projects that have come because of the big golden goose projects that we get it, as well. It definitely does happen. It might not happen as quickly as some people think we're, we're, this one's under construction, so the other ones are going to start right away. Yep. But they generally will pull in because eventually they're going to use up any of the services that they would have available to them, and other services are going to have to fill the void of what can't be served. Sure, sure. I got to hit on one more number here, Albert, yeah. before we uh, close out the show. Uh, multiple family units, uh, what, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier, and I just had to highlight it here. Uh, at this time, uh, at the end of June, that is, uh, 1,031 units so far this year. Uh, 2020 was 284 at this time, and 2019, 338. So, uh, I mean, easily more than double, more like triple the number. Uh, yeah, you look at those numbers and we are putting out a lot of units per in permitting. And so yeah. a lot of those units are gonna come online later on here. Because if they're permitting them here in the 2021, nobody's living in those units yet. I mean, they're just yep. not built yet. But they're gonna be coming on closer at the end of the year probably or early next year. And so, yeah, you can, that story right there just tells you how big of demand in housing we have. Uh, and just shows you how they're trying to play that, you know, catch up to that trying side to of it. But up. again, like we talked about, it's to me as an urban planner looking at these numbers, um, and if you go through the full year records for 19 and 20, it's just been a significant amount of investment in multifamily, single family as well. But it's just hard to imagine that we were going to keep on that same track yep. and grow at that same rate. Um, this is just another example of trying to do that. And, you know, from a city perspective for us, um, again, we try to make those apartments blend in as best we can to the existing neighborhoods so they don't get a negative effect in that area. But also for us, it's important to have a higher density inside the city so mm -hmm. that we can service these areas with water, sewer, fire, police, health. And so the denser we have those areas, the easier it is to service those without expanding our footprint and expanding our cost. Yep. Yep. So there's, from our side there, there's a positive to doing that, but also too in theory with these rentals, um, you should be hopefully seeing a mix of different market levels for those apartments so that people can find a place to live that yep. they want to. Yep, we need that. There's uh, a definitely demand for high-end stuff, but then we also need that affordable stuff as well because yeah. uh, we know that uh, is, is tough to find. So, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us uh, for the whole show, Albert. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Sioux Falls, for tuning in to Planning Preview for the month of August. A reminder, August 4th, at 6 p.m. at Carnegie Town Hall is our Planning Commission meeting. We'd love to have you there. Thank you for watching.